Pokemons can change a character's power set, their origin, and even the way we view them. In some ways for the better, and in many ways, for the worse. Spider-Man is a character who has been plagued with a lot of misery in his life, and this has extended to the realm of retcons as well for him. Among some of the worst retcons that he's had is probably the one involving his marriage to Mary Jane, which was retconned out of existence after a plot where Mary Jane and Peter agreed to trade the existence of their marriage to Mephisto, in exchange for saving Aunt May's life, which also had the added coincidental bonus of making Peter's identity as Spider-Man a secret once more. At the time, it wasn't a secret, never Everyone knew about it. But also, this sucked for a lot of us readers who were fans of the couple. For a while, I thought this relationship would be returned to us, with the end of Nick Spencer's run seemingly building towards that. But Zeb Wells, it seems, had other plans for MJ and Peter, unfortunately. Are there any ships that aren't together right now in the comics that you wish were happening, or any that like loves that we've lost that you wish just like came back? I love Oracle, but I don't really love the path we took to get to Oracle, if that makes sense. Batgirl is Barbara Gordon. Barbara Gordon is also known for being, in most continuities and stories, the daughter of police chief Commissioner Gordon, Batman's ally. Granted, most people don't know that Barbara herself is also Batman's ally and sidekick Batgirl. And when Barbara was targeted by the Joker, not even he knew this. In fact, he only targeted her because she was the daughter of the commissioner who happened to be at his home when Joker paid him a house call. As a result, Barbara was shot through the stomach, seemingly irreparably damaging her spine. Don't worry. She'd get better, because that's comics for you. And technically, this story wasn't even intended to be part of the main canon. The events take place in a story known as Batman the Killing Joke, but while the entire story was not made canon, the events of Barbara being shot were retroactively incorporated into the canon for some reason, leaving her paralyzed for a time. During this time, she took up the mantle of Oracle and became Batman's woman in the chair, a master hacker and a digital mastermind. That part I don't mind myself. Barbara as Oracle is still super cool. But the idea of this being the only part of the killing joke, her being shot, that was incorporated into the main canon, mm, that I'm not a big fan of. What happened to Franklin Richards that he was ruined as a character? Well, many believe him being nerfed as a mutant totally ruined him. I'd also agree with this. I was holding out hope that his mutant status being revoked was part of a larger plot point and that the overall story would eventually end with his mutant status being restored. But I've been waiting for some time and my hope is starting to die out, alas. This change also means that all all the fighting that happened over Franklin between the X-Men and the Fantastic Four basically just didn't matter. Joker is a character whose origin is plagued with retcons, plagued with them, one after the other. While I wouldn't say this, I know some believe that learning the origin of the Joker in Batman 3 Jokers was something that ruined the character for them. In fact, many folks would extend this back to when Batman, using the Mobius chair, learned the true identity of the Joker. Although really, what he had learned, as we learn in uh, 3 Jokers, Jokers was that there were multiple Jokers. That was the answer he got. To me, having multiple Jokers makes sense, though the idea that they were all selected and then forged in a soup of chemicals in like a giant pool is pretty odd. This retcon might be a bit more controversial in terms of its inclusion here on my list. I'm sure some people are going to have strong feelings about me including this here, but I'm gonna keep going. Some people really love it, some people hate it. Me, I can actually see both sides overall. I'm personally kind of just more mixed on it, but that's that's enough for me to include it here. Hal Jordan is often celebrated as many readers' favorite version of Green Lantern, but he hasn't always been a hero in the comics. There was a time when he actually turned dark, but this was explained away by the fact that apparently, retroactively, Hal Jordan had been possessed by the fear entity known as Parallax for years, which is also why his temples turned gray. That's right, that's why his hair changed color. Well, I like that this helps to preserve Hal Jordan's image as a tried and true hero, because you know, he wasn't really responsible for everything that happened that he did that was bad. I do think this robs his character of some depth and agency in regards to that. After all, Hal had some reasons to go dark and we could have just as easily explored that and then later set him down a redemption path. Especially considering Hal Jordan turning dark is one of the most interesting things to have ever happened to this character. Scarlet Witch is one of my all time favorite characters from Marvel Comics. If you know me, if you've seen me, Amanda, host some videos, you know I've been a long time fan of hers. I constantly talk about Wanda on this channel and I constantly talk about the injustices that she has suffered. Chief among them are her retcons, with one big retcon some
summing up the greatest issue I have with how she has been characterized in recent years. That of course is the monumental shift in her origin from being a mutant to a non-mutant. Sad. This all went down as part of Axis, which honestly is such a weird event. Axis is kind of like just a mixed bag for me. There are some things I really love about it and other things that are just a mess or are just super weird, honestly. Friendly Neighborhood Carnage, I am looking at you here. But one of the messiest parts of that event for me is the fallout we get with Quicksilver and Scarlet Witch and their fake dad, Magneto. Here we learn when Wanda attempts to put a blood hex on her brother and her father that Magneto is not actually blood related to her and ergo is not the father. Of course, while this revelation for Wanda has always upset me, it does not end there. It extends to Quicksilver as well. Poor Quicksilver. He was really put in a weird position after this revelation. No longer a mutant, we'd find out he was somehow kind of an inhuman? Or his genes were like altered by the inhuman process of Terragenesis? It's a whole weird thing. Quicksilver gets depowered and then ends up getting his powers back through Terragenesis, basically. And yes, I know what you're about to say. Isn't that just an inhuman thing? Normally, yes. So does this mean that Quicksilver is an inhuman? Overall, no, but also like... Kinda? I mean, he was married to an Inhuman and his daughter is an Inhuman, so like, I think they mostly just wanted a place to put him in terms of a camp, other than, you know, Team Avengers camp. Also, this was at a time where Marvel still didn't have those X-Men rights, so Inhumans were still a thing that they were kinda trying to push and make cool because they didn't have film rights for the X-Men. The Inhumans are cool, by the way, they just aren't really the same as the X-Men, in my opinion. So it was kinda just a weird push. Like, let the Inhumans be the Inhumans, let the X-Men be the X-Men. That's what I think. For those who aren't familiar with her, Holly Robinson was once known to be one of Catwoman's close friends. She was basically like a sister to Catwoman, although she wasn't exactly Catwoman's sister. Catwoman does have a sister and it's not Holly, it's Maggie. So Holly isn't her sister by blood, but she is her sister through the streets. Holly and Selina grew up in the same orphanage in the Prime Earth continuity, but in the previous New Earth continuity, they grew up on the streets together with Selina looking out for Holly as she would a younger sister. And yet it would later be revealed in the Prime Earth continuity right around the time that Selena was set to marry Bruce that Holly had actually been manipulating Selena into breaking off the marriage because she was secretly working for Bane. Okay, so this was more of a plot point and a bit less of a retcon to be honest with you, but it was still a twist that was unexpected and that I didn't like. And I feel like surprise twists can have a very similar impact or feel to retcons, so I'm just going to include it. It felt so out of character for Holly. Honestly. Honestly. Akin to Spider-Man's retcon woes, Gwen, Stacy, has had some of her own. This also extends to making Peter's life more miserable, as well as just making Peter kind of look like a superficial jerk in a way, with this specific retcon I'm about to talk about. What happened to Gwen? What is this retcon? Well, during Sin's past, we were given one of the worst retcons possibly ever, which involved Gwen having cheated on Peter with Norman Osborn, yeah, Green Goblin, and having given birth to twins. Norman Osborn's twins that were born of their affair in secret. What? Thank goodness this was recently re-retconned away. Has been fixed, but still it's a retcon that happened. Power Girl's retcons have been numerous and many of them have had to do with her origin and in some cases her powers. One of the most bizarre retcons she had was she was actually Atlantean. Yeah, very bizarre when you consider that she is normally known for being, of course, the cousin of Superman from an alternate reality than the main continuity. Also, there's a whole bunch of other weird stuff I could talk about with that, but you know, we're out of time. That's about it. I'm your host, Amanda McKnight. Until next time, you stay nerdy, YouTube. Bye. Loves that we've lost that you wish just like came back. Oh my gosh, that freaked me out. Someone walked past our window. Sorry, I thought I had, I had like a dust moat that went into my mouth. Dusty.